People thought the First World War would be over quickly. Experts and leaders thought economies simply wouldn't be able to keep up with the costs for long. On the other hand, powers had been building up for a war like this for years. They had defense deals with others in case of attack. One was the Triple Alliance, another the Triple Entente. One key assassination flung the armies into battle. Austria-Hungary was junior to Germany in strength, but both belligerents acted to bolster their prestige. Rail transport accelerated mobilizations. Britain backed France under a prior agreement to stop Germany changing the balance of continental power. Swiftly, the whole world became involved. The prevailing mentality among war planners was to press massive attacks, yet overwhelming strength was never enough. The lines bogged down in trench carnage for more than four years. Sixty million soldiers fought, more than nine million of them were killed, and almost the same number of civilians. The wounded and disabled counted 20 million. Then Imperial Russia stopped fighting, leaving Germany free to concentrate on the Western Front. Then the Americans joined in. Before their mighty intervention, however, the killing brought mass mutiny among the French. Mutiny threatened among the Germans as their efforts neared collapse. The military, renouncing the Kaiser, who was exiled to the neutral Netherlands, sought an armistice. A few photos recorded the signing in a railway carriage at Compiègne outside Paris. In that secret location, after secret negotiations, on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month of 1918, a ceasefire came into effect. The sides remained formally at war until the conclusive Treaty of Versailles of June 1919. Although the armistice was celebrated, entire societies were warped and shocked. So many men were gone, many returned to their home countries permanently damaged. Whole nations, whether defeated or victorious, were now less populated and poorer after the most ruinous war in history.